Genesis Communications presents the show that's helping people see better and feel better all over Florida. It's Ask the Doctor with board-certified optometric physician, certified nutritional specialist, and popular radio host, Dr. Michael Lang of Lang Eye Care and Associates. Okay, good morning, and welcome to Ask the Doctor. I'm your host, as usual, Dr. Michael Lang of Lang Eye Care and Associates, the Lang Eye Institute, and Fortify Vitamins. If you've got a question regarding your vision, eye care, or a nutritionally related topic, now's the time to pick up the phones. 1 866 977 4820. That's 1 866 977 4820. If you're new to the program, well, I'm a board-certified optometric physician. I'm also a certified nutritional specialist. I founded Lang Eye Care and Associates March 15th of 1993. We now have nine locations throughout the great state of Florida. I'm the founder of Fortify Vitamins and Lang Nutrition Centers as well. Uh, this show is dedicated to you, the listener, so no matter how complicated or simple the question is, I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. You can check us out on the web at langeyecare.com or drmichaellang.com. Uh, you can see our locations and learn a little bit about our philosophy of eye care. And then anything I talk about on this program at all, whether it's coconut oil, a manuka honey, organic green tea, or any of the supplements we talk about, uh, if you can't find them at your local health food store or through your eye, eye care provider, then you can always go to fortify.com or you can go to the Lang Nutrition Center. Let me give you a toll-free number. Write this down right now because uh, you can always uh, get information and get anything we talk about at this toll-free number. 1-866-503-9746. That's 1-866-503-9746. And actually, this morning, it's not just Ask the Doctor. It's Ask the Doctors. It's myself, Dr. Michael Lang, and my very welcome guest, Dr. Steve Newman, and he's also a board-certified optometric physician and one of five certified nutritional specialists in our field. And he practices down in Miami. Uh, he lectures on the circuit. He is a nutritional guru in our field of eye care. And he's also written a book called uh, Feel More Alive Now. And I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce Steve. Steve, good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Mike. Thank you. And, uh, you know, before we go to the first caller, can you just expand a little bit on, on, on your book real quick? That's a, a good way, a segue into what we're going to talk about today, nutrition in the eyes. But tell us a little bit about Feel More Alive Now. Well, the whole thing is whenever you go to an eye doctor, they shine that very bright, annoying light into the back of your eyes. And what they're doing there is not just torturing you, but they're actually making the, an assessment of your blood vessels and the relationship of your blood vessels, your veins and your arteries in relationship to you, your overall systemic health, your body health. Uh, when I do that, I also can check for high blood pressure, diabetes, things like that. Every eye doctor is doing this, but then I take it to the next step and I talk to my patient about what medications they're on and the nutritional depletion that those medications cause inside your body. So I can advise them on what vitamins and supplements they can personally do and take on a daily basis in order to keep a healthy life, in order to keep a healthy lifestyle. So I put it all in book form uh, where you've got uh, a discussion on the proper nutrition. I don't want to call it a diet because uh, a diet is, a, is kind of a four-letter word, and we don't want to use that more of a way of eating, uh, a comfortable, easy way of, of eating that you can do for the rest of your life. Uh, and there's plenty of recipes in there. And we also go over vitamins and supplements and what they do, how they do it, the difference between good vitamins and bad vitamins, highly absorbable vitamins and vitamins that just end up in your toilet bowl. So it's a, it's a very, uh, I'll, I'll call it a, uh, uh, a nutrition 101 book. It's very basic, it's very easy to read, and, uh, and it's very helpful for a lot of my patients. Fantastic. And, and that book you can get uh, at Amazon, right? Yes, Amazon.com. So it's Feel More Alive Now by Dr. Steve Newman. And Dr. Newman has the same philosophy as I do at Lang Eye Care. You know, we want to help our patients become proactive in their future health. So when you come in uh, for a routine eye exam, we're not only looking for eye diseases, but like Dr. Newman mentioned, uh, it, the eye is the window to the body. So we can detect many systemic health problems. And the key is early detection. And uh, this, is, this is why it's so important to see your 
optometrist or your ophthalmologist on an annual basis, uh, you don't just go in for an eye exam when your eyes are blurry uh, because there's a lot of problems that can be manifesting uh, that you're asymptomatic. So like I said, we, we go that extra mile since we're certified nutritional specialists as well, and I think eye care providers are, are starting to get into that arena, and you know, both of us are trying to push that more into the eye care field, helping uh, eye care providers become more proactive, helping the patients help themselves through proper diet, exercise, sleep, hydration, um, proper supplementation. We're going to talk a lot about that today because a lot of vitamins out there actually may do more harm than good. All right, looks like the phones are loading up. Uh, we got a few callers. Uh, if you got a question, um, uh, stay tuned. We'll get to everybody today. Let's go to our first call over the morning. Good morning, Bob in Ocala. Good morning, doctors. How are you this morning? Fabulous. How are you? I'm doing quite well, thank you. Uh, Dr. Lang, I read an article last week, and uh, this this may segue well with what, what you want to talk about today. Uh, it referred to the AREDS-2 study, uh, but what it did, uh, and it kind of surprised me, is they, have, they were uh, advertising a product that had 20 milligrams of lutein, 4 milligrams of astaxanthin, and uh, 2... Uh, or I guess maybe four, four milligrams of zeaxanthin right. in it. And uh, I know uh, I've been taking Focus for quite some time now, and um, that's six, four, and four, I believe. Is that correct? Uh, that's six milligrams of astaxanthin, four milligrams of lutein, and then uh, what? Three, four hundred micrograms of uh, zeaxanthin. Correct. Okay, uh, and I. I, I was concerned. I've I've asked this question before. I I have a tendency to be if if X amount is good, twice the amount is twice as good, and that doesn't necessarily hold true uh, in the health food or uh, vitamin uh, market. And I was wondering, this product uh, advertising 20 milligrams of lutein, uh, and they did say that it was twice that which the ARAD2 study showed us be an optimum amount. Uh, are they shooting themselves in the foot? You know, that's a great question, Bob. And, and I think, actually, when it comes to carotenoids like that, lutein, zeaxanthin, astaxanthin, I think that's a very safe level, okay? Uh, the AREDS2 um, isn't necessarily uh, the panacea of perfection. You know, why did they pick uh, 10 milligrams is the question. Uh, is 20 milligrams better? Uh, that's also a good question. There are some studies out there that are using higher dosages of lutein uh, with some pretty interesting results. But, as you know, we talk a lot about certain fat-soluble vitamins and other things that can build up and be too high in uh, uh, concentrations that can cause some potential toxicity. But I think you're safe with those levels of lutein, zeaxanthin, and astaxanthin. Now, remember, the astaxanthin studies, most of the studies that relate to the eye use 6 milligrams of astaxanthin, the accommodative studies, the anti-inflammatory studies. Uh, but 4 milligrams is certainly good. So that sounds like a pretty decent product to me. What, what, what do you think, uh, Dr. Newman? Well, when you talk about that, you have to think about, uh, you know, when, when the human, when, when you're born, Okay, when, when the human body comes out of the factory, so to say, uh, number one, we are not all made the same. And then when we live our lifestyles, we don't live the same lifestyles. Uh, when we talk about absorption of lutein in the macula, specifically for macular degeneration, there, there's a plethora of things that go into how well the lutein that you put in your mouth gets absorbed through into your bloodstream and into the lymph vessels, and then finally gets up to the retina and the macula in order to give you uh, uh, less chance of uh, and less risk of macular degeneration. So uh, 20 migs of lutein might be uh, too much for one, and when I say too much, it's not like it's going to be toxic, it's just that it's not gonna do any better than 10 milligrams or six milligrams, whereas for other people, maybe they need that 20 milligrams. So uh, it's, it's like no, the human body is not the same for everybody genetically and especially with our lifestyles. Uh, there's other supplements that you might be taking that are interfering with the absorption of, uh, of lutein and zeaxanthin and astaxanthin. So it, it's not, a, it's not a, you know, a one pill for all type of uh, supplement. 
And Bob, uh, he brings up, uh, Steve brings up a valid point there. And the A-Reds 2 actually confirms what we've known for a while now. You know, beta carotene, the good thing, this supplement that you're talking about has no beta carotene in it. And we recommend staying away from beta carotene if you're taking lutein and zeaxanthin, especially if you're a macular degenerative patient. We know now there is uh, some form of either competitive inhibition or if you get really technical, there's binding sites on lutein in the liver that beta carotene binds to and doesn't allow the lutein to absorb. So uh, we're definitely recommending staying away from beta carotene in a supplement, especially for patients with macular degeneration, if there's lutein in that supplement. Um, but that's a great question, Bob. Thanks for the call. You're very welcome, gentlemen. Have yourself a wonderful Florida weekend. All right. You take care. Bye. All right, one eight six six nine seven seven four eight twenty. We're also going to talk about food for macular degeneration here in a few minutes, and ways you can eat specific foods uh, that are very high in lutein, zeaxanthin, and astaxanthin. But let's go back to the phones. Let's see, Emma in Clearwater. Good morning. Good morning, doctor. I have a question uh, for a friend of mine. She has uh, ocular rosacea. Uh, she has had um, cataract surgery and with the Restore lens implant. Mm -hmm. She d does say that uh, uh, she feels her vision has diminished a little bit. And uh, I was wondering if there's anything, uh, the, the, what route you would recommend for her uh, um, that would be, you know, helpful. Well, obviously getting in to see her optometrist or ophthalmologist is key and seeing what they have to say. It's hard to, uh, you know, diagnose this over the phone. But just because she has ocular rosacea doesn't mean she's going to have impaired vision from that. But let's just talk a little bit about some of the side effects from ocular rosacea. Uh, oftentimes these patients will have really thick oils in their glands that secrete more or less the outer layer called the lipid layer of your tear film. And if these glands become uh, blocked, then you have a compromised tear film and you get a secondary dry eye. If your eyes get dry, then the optics of the cornea become very poor. And so what I like to uh, preach with my patients uh, is good lid hygiene, you know, scrubbing the eyelashes with something like Ocusoft lid scrub foam or some sort of special preparation that helps get rid of the, uh, the staph bacteria and all the garbage that hangs out on the lashes. So we clean the lashes. Hot compresses two to three times a day with a little gentle massage kind of breaks down uh, this thick uh, cottage cheese that's inside these lid uh, glands called the meibomian glands and this is also where I, I recommend a good triglyceride form omega-3 fish oil and of course the one that I, I produce is called Fortify Super Omega but Nordic Naturals has a good product PRN has a good product uh, the gist of this story is try to stay with a triglyceride form omega-3 fish oil and there's studies out there that indicate this helps to uh, alleviate this thickened uh, uh, discharge that's inside these meibomian glands and so you have a healthier tear film, and, and it also helps break down inflammation. And then using a good lubricant, and I like unpreserved lubricants, uh, and then hydrating, drinking enough water, even coconut water, because most of us are dehydrated. So this is just a little education for you. Um, it certainly doesn't replace the eye exam, but I'm going to let Steve chime in a little bit about this as well. Yeah, well, for those listeners out there that don't know what the Restore lens in, and with, with cataract surgery, you have an anatomical lens inside your eye that you've used all your life to accommodate to be able to adjust the focus from far away to up close. And with age, that anatomical lens kind of turns into a yellow marble. And uh, when the ophthalmologist goes in and, and explants that, takes that out of your body, he needs to put a replacement lens in there, kind of like an old-fashioned hard contact lens, but it's inside the eye, so you never have to take it out and replace it and clean it. Uh, the Restore lens is similar to a progressive lens. Uh, those of you that are uh, over 45 that wear bifocals, you know you can get a bifocal with a line or without a line. The ones without the line give you all of your fields of view, your computers in focus, your foods in focus, readings in focus, dashboard on the car. So the Restore lens is out there in order to give you the optimal vision. So I can understand when your friend goes in for surgery and she's told by the ophthalmologist, I'm going to give you this, this new technology lens that's going to be able to uh, get you to focus at all these different distances. And then after the surgery, your friend comes out blurry. Well, and by the way, this Restore Lens is a premium product, so it is usually not covered by insurances where the surgery is. You have to pay an upcharge to get this type of technology. So you go through all of this, you take money out of your pocket to do this, and then all of a sudden, you are not clear afterwards. 95% of the blurriness post-cataract is caused by what Dr. Lang just told you, the tear film. 
you can get a brand new windshield put in on your car, but if you don't have any windshield washer fluid and you get mud on it, you're not going to be able to see through the brand new windshield. So by keeping the tear layer in front of the cornea clear and clean and in the proper ratio, um, and that's where the triglyceride omega-3s come in because the the uh, like Dr. Kang, Dr. Lang described it as cottage cheese type uh, in the in the uh, in the glands of your lids that produce the lipid layer. I like to use the analogy of butter. Uh, if you put butter in the refrigerator, it's hard. If you put butter on the stove, it loosens up and it's soft and it's liquidy. Well, we want this lipid layer to be liquidy so that it is able to come to get extruded from your lids and give you that proper 2020 or better type of vision after the surgery. So yes, I do recommend artificial tears and, uh, and omega-3 so that the triglyceride form. The other thing that might be coming into play, depending on how long after surgery your friend had her surgery, is that it's very common for a slight haze to occur after cataract surgery because when we do take the yellow marble out and put the clear lens back in, we put it in the anatomical envelope that the yellow marble was in. And sometimes that anatomical envelope can get clouded. And usually after surgery, not usually, but sometimes you have to go in there, with, the ophthalmologist would have to go in there with a laser beam and just clear up that envelope a few months after surgery. So you see, Emma, there's a whole host of things that could be causing some uh, impaired vision. And then on the other side of the coin, she could also have some degeneration of her retina, macular degeneration starting, which we're going to talk a little bit more. So basically, she needs to get into her eye care provider, find out what's going on, and, and take the time to talk to her doctor. And what happens today, there's too many doctors that it's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and they're out the door, and they don't talk to their patients. And if you have a question, they say, well, talk to the technician. If that's happening, then she needs to find another eye care provider. Uh, she is taking Fortify. Would, will that also help her? Well, you know, depending on which Fortify she's taking, I mean, that, uh, as you well the know, focus. is a supplement that I developed based on a lot of research, and we redeveloped it 10 times over the last seven years. Uh, it is not a miracle pill by any means, but it is going to give her the nutrients that her body and her eyes are thirsting for, and that's one piece of the puzzle. I mean, if your body has the nutrition that it thirsts for, then uh, it can do some amazing things. So, you know, I'm a big advocate of the least amount of medication, the least amount of surgery that gets the job done, and the first step in the right direction is taking the right supplements. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, Emma. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 1-866-977-4820. You're listening to Ask the Doctors. It's myself, Dr. Michael Lang, and Dr. Stephen Newman, both uh, optometric physicians and certified nutritional specialists. So if you got a question, uh, please don't hesitate giving us a call. One more time. It's 1-866-977-4820. Let's go to the Marie in Tampa. Marie, good morning. Welcome to the program. Um, th yes, thank you for taking my call. I appreciate your program. Uh, you mentioned, um, let's see, first of all, uh, I was diagnosed with glaucoma and have cataracts. And you mentioned something about Turmeric, T-U-R-M-E-R-I-C. I take 800 milligrams twice a day. And you mentioned something negative about that, so I, I didn't get that clear. I was wondering if you could explain it. Right, that was another show. Yeah, um, yeah. Right, uh, turmeric, curcumin, uh, has some interesting anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. And uh, I think it's a great supplement. But personally, I don't like people taking super high dosages for long-term use. Remember Vioxx? They pulled Vioxx off the market because it had some potential side effects that were unwanted. And act, uh, some of these medications and supplements can act as COX-2 inhibitors. They're blocking cyclooxygenase, and that's a specific enzymatic pathway that God put in your body for a specific reason. And I think blocking that short-term, you know, you develop a little swelling, a little edema, I think it's fine, but when you're using high dosages of some of these uh, uh, nutritional COX-2 inhibitors, you potentially can open up a can of worms because, uh, it, you know, when you have to clot, you might not clot. When you're supposed to spike a fever, you might not have tr uh, you might have some difficulty spiking a fever. So unless you're under medical supervision or some nutritional specialist and knows what they're doing, I don't recommend taking high dosages of of things like curcumin and turmeric or even uh, boswellia root and things like that um, just because of the potential side effects. Just because it's a supplement doesn't mean, mean it's safe. 
Now, low dosages of curcumin and turmeric, uh, long term, you can take all day long for the rest of your life. And when we say low dosages, I mean, what's a low dosage? Maybe 50 milligrams, 30 milligrams, 20 milligrams, something like that. But short term use, if you're using it, you know, for a couple of weeks or so, that's fine. And if, if you're taking it, I also, oftentimes, you know, for chronic degenerative things like rheumatoid arthritis, maybe you're on it two weeks off one week, on two weeks off one week. But talk with your doctor about this as well. Yes, I went to my nutritionist, and she, you know, she's the one that told me to take two of them, you know, which is uh, 1,600 milligrams. Yeah. So thank you very much. All right, Marie, take care. Okay, take care. Thank you. And once again, if the nutritionist recommend it, uh, you know, it's it's not a bad idea to consult with your family fat practitioner, you know, obviously run blood tests routinely. Uh, the problem with a lot of traditional physicians, they don't know a lot about nutrition. And uh, that's why Steve and I and a few other docs uh, went to the American College of Nutrition and became a certified nutritional specialist, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 1-866-977-4820. Uh, Steve, we're talking a little bit about macular degeneration today, and we're going to talk about some studies if we have time. But let's give some, some of our listeners, let's talk a little bit about the foods that they can eat uh, that are very high, especially in lutein. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about zeaxanthin and astaxanthin. Okay, well, before we get into the exact foods, I'd like to talk about something about a little bit more basic, the amount of food that you eat. Uh, if you all right now just make a fist and hold it up in front of you, you'll see the portion size that is the largest portion of food you should be eating at any given time. And uh, for most of us, we eat three or four times that at every meal. We only eat three meals a day. If we're eating three, a lot of people are skipping breakfast. Uh, which is not good. You want to always put something in your system within an hour of awakening. But uh, the amount of food is, uh, in my opinion, it's just as important as the type of food that you're eating. But, yes, absolutely, certain types of foods are better. Uh, what I like to tell my, uh, my patients who have family members that are suffering from macular degeneration uh, is that Popeye knew more than Bugs Bunny. Okay, what I mean by that is spinach is a much healthier food for your eyes than carrots. Carrots have a lot of sugar in them, and sugar causes inflammation, and we're looking to reduce inflammation. And uh, the spinach itself is loaded with the nutrients that we need for our eyes. And spinach, uh, you know, the lutein is what we're talking about mainly, but many other nutrients. And, and some newer studies are also suggesting that, uh, you know, cooking them gently or juicing them to help break down the cell wall. You know, a cow can digest a chlorophyll-based cell wall. Humans have some difficulty digesting that. So gently sautéing it in some coconut oil or steaming it's a good idea. Or in a juicer, you know, juicing it without the carrots, though, um, is going to help release and unlock the bioavailability of the lutein. And then orange bell peppers are very high in something called zeaxanthin that is also a carotenoid that's been shown to potentially be beneficial for macular degeneration wild alaskan salmon very high in something called astaxanthin which is a carotenoid we talk about on this program all the time but also it's kind of the double whammy steve it also has omega-3 yes. in wild alaskan salmon so now a power food for macular degeneration would be take your wild alaskan salmon not farm raised saute it in some coconut oil add some organic spinach orange bell peppers and maybe eat a handful of uh, goji berries and finish it off with a Pinot Noir from the Oregon region, a biodynamic, organically grown Pinot Noir, and you're set. Let's just talk briefly before we next take the next caller about why would we want our patients to have organically grown spinach versus conventionally grown spinach or genetically modified spinach? Well, well genetically modified, forget about. I mean, uh, hopefully we'll see in the next few years the United States just as a nation decide and just say no to that because that is going to cause uh, so much harm to us personally. It's going to cause harm to our to our economy. It's going to throw our health care system into just disarray. It's going to be horrible for us. As far as Conventional versus organic. Uh, the way I like to do this, and listen, we all make decisions when we go into the, to the market. Uh, the first thing about shopping in a market, spend your time on the perimeter of the market. Uh, I call all of the aisles in a supermarket the chemistry set aisles, and all of everything on the periphery is your real food because that's where all your fresh produce is found, and that's where all your cold and frozen food are found. Uh, but when it comes to conventional and organic, if you're going to peel it, then it's not quite as important to, uh, to go with organic. So let's say an, an, an avocado, for instance, versus a strawberry. 
Well, if you're going to spray herbicides and pesticides on an avocado, it is going to get onto the skin, and some of that does get absorbed into the flesh of the fruit. It is The rain and the irrigation is going to uh, taint the soil that it's growing in. So some of the pesticides and herbicides, and with each generation it gets more concentrated, are going to get into the flesh of the avocado. But with the strawberry, it gets absorbed right away. And these herbicides and pesticides, when they go into our system, they can actually block the absorption of the good nutrients that are in the healthy food. Listen, we're making a decision to eat spinach because it's healthy for us. Not a lot of us really enjoy spinach, but those of us that do, we, we, we want to have it healthy. All right, the music's on, and, uh, you know, Don was had a question about prostate. And, Steve, you guys are going to have to stay tuned, and we'll take your question on the other side of the break. Don, you might have to call back, uh, but you've been listening to Ask the Doctors. Dr. Steve Newman and Dr. Michael Lang will be back in about two and a half minutes, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. 